I don't really write scripts in that when I make these videos, but I did kind of do a voice note when I was uh, out for a walk earlier, and uh, it says, any eBay is the 90s emoji with a dreamt of. It's not even close to what I said. Welcome back to another video, uh, and this one is a particularly exciting one, which I probably say most times I make videos. But today we will be making the 90s e-bike of our dreams. That's right, we're converting one of my 90s mighties back. That's right, that sounds like a game show or something. But we're gonna convert my Scott Sawtooth that we built in the last the last build we did um, to an e-bike. I'm gonna be doing that with the help from my friends at Switch. So I told them all about the Scott and I uh, told them what I was doing with it, told them what I was building, that I was kind of making this like ultimate commuter that I wanted to ride for the rest of the year. and. Uh, they were kind enough to send out one of their switch kits. In this video, I'm gonna spend time just building it all up. Uh, we might go for a little ride at the end, uh, but I want to kind of see how easy it is to set up. This is a consumer conversion kit. The idea is that you can buy this online, put it on any bike and make it an e-bike. I'm definitely into that type of stuff. Uh, I want cycling to be as accessible to everybody as possible. And I think that's what this is. I'm a big fan of this product. Um, so today it's gonna to be a case of building it up, seeing how good the actual kit is itself and uh yeah see if it lives up to my high standards i i don't have high standards i just like old things and i quite like electric things so beep, 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 beep. to kind of make this a kind of a fair build as well i'm not going to use my bike stand i'm not going to use like, all my massive tools i'm going to try and use the, the bare minimum of stuff because this is designed for consumers i'm going to use it as a consumer would so you know with minimal tools and just kind of essentially on my kitchen floor so without waffling on more, let's, uh, let's go on my kitchen floor and build a bike with an e-bike. Build a, let's do a switch kit. So this is my Scott Sawtooth. Uh, if you haven't seen this video, I'm gonna link it right in the display right now. Uh, and today we are gonna be using the switch bike to turn this Scott Sawtooth into an e-bike using the switch kit. So right off the top, uh, the packaging is awesome. Uh, it's really well packaged, the box is really sturdy. Um, and there's a message here saying the fact that you can use this box to store your old wheel. I think that's pretty solid. So if you do have some space to kind of put your wheel and you want to keep it, which I advise you do, put it in a box, keep it safe. So inside the box, you'll find a couple of other boxes. The first one has the, the mounts and the charger in it and some of the adapters and the sensors, all that kind of good stuff. Uh, and the second one is the battery. So inside the box itself, you'll get a, a manual, the actual battery itself, and then the battery. Uh, it's a very good looking battery. I know that seems like a weird thing to say. Batteries on e-bike conversion kits are normally pretty bland. This one's kind of stylish, so I'm into it. Inside the accessory box, you'll have a few manuals. The manuals are really, really well made and easy to use. Uh, and then you'll have the mounts, uh, some rain covers, the actual sensor, chargers, and all that kind of stuff. And that's all the bits. Oh well, and the wheel. So let's do it. Um, first, I took the wheel off the front of the bike. Uh, obviously, I wanted to keep the same tire on there, so I had to move that onto the, the switch wheel. I'm not gonna tell you how I did that. It's the same way as you do any tire and inner tube onto another wheel. So the switch kit will work on any bike. How you, that works is when you order your wheel, you have to tell them exact measurements of your wheel, uh, the dropouts on your fork and the width of your fork, and they will send you a wheel for that frame. In some cases, when you do put it onto the actual bike itself, um, you may need to add some washers just to kind of space that out a little bit more. Uh, in my case, uh, when I did put it on there, the motor did hit the fork very, very slightly. Probably would have been fine, but it was enough to kind of be like, that's probably not safe. And I put an extra spacer in there and then it, uh, it went nice and freely. Um, being an e-bike, it, it does have a nut on there, not just a quick release. You obviously want this wheel to stay on the bike, so make sure you are tightening it up nice and tight. So next is the actual sensor that goes on your pedals. Uh, this little system is pretty clever, I quite like it. Um, a lot of kits that I've seen in the past as well don't have this many magnets in the sensor, so the engagement on this is pretty much straight away. 
Um, it also comes with these little bristle kind of like spaces to kind of make sure they fit different cranks. So there's a couple in the in the kit, so you can make sure you get the right one for your bike. The manual that comes with the kit is really, really well made. And there's a great page that shows you exactly like which way different cranks will accept this sensor. Uh, my one was pretty simple and um, it just kind of clips into place. And then once you kind of get it on there, there's a metal ring that kind of goes over to kind of hold it all in place, which was nice and easy to put on. And then a couple of zip ties. I mean, zip ties are my favorite tool probably. So um, I've always got time for zip ties. The arm of the sensor that goes on your crank has a couple of pivots on it uh, to kind of help you get the disc or the round bit with the sensors on it completely straight. You obviously want that as flat as possible so each sensor or each magnet will hit the sensor. Um, so basically get it all on there, move it around, bend it until you, the disc is completely uh, flat and then you can tighten up those pivots. Uh, next is the sensor. It was really easy to fit again, like everything else. Um, you basically just stick it on uh, and then attach it permanently with the zip ties. Um, the most important thing is the actual sensor itself has a little kind of like crosshair on it. Make sure that lines up with those magnets. Uh, if it's not picking up the magnets, you're gonna lose power and then it's not gonna be as enjoyable as it can be. Next is the cabling and they supply you with a million zip ties. So you'll have plenty to kind of make sure you route it the way you want to. And even if you change your mind halfway through and want to redo it, there's plenty there. So it's, um, I think that's really good. Next is the bracket for the battery. It's super easy to install. It's literally two bolts. The only thing to make sure you do correctly is the ribbon that kind of goes underneath your stem. This is to stop the actual bracket itself spinning round. So obviously, you're going to be putting a big battery on this. You don't want it kind of like moving round as you're going along. Uh, so this ribbon kind of holds that in place, which is really good. Ribbon makes it sound like it's going to break and it's not very strong. Like this is a really sturdy bit of material. Um, it's not a ribbon. And then the last thing, once you've kind of got all that on, is the cabling. Um, I'm not happy with the cabling I've done so far. I think this is kind of a, more of a trial and error type thing. Uh, you obviously want to make sure the cabling isn't too tight wrapped anywhere, because uh, if you steer the bike too much or if you fall off, it could break something. So make sure there's a lot of like sag and loose, but you don't want it kind of hanging because then you might catch it on things. So there's a happy medium that you need to try and find. And obviously it's different on every bike. Uh, I think I'm going to have another go at mine, um, but for now at least, so I can test it and go and have some fun. It was perfect. Right then, first test with the uh, switch kit. It's a bit chilly. And we're on. It's on medium power right now. That's got some kick. All right, let's take it for a proper ride. And we're gonna leave it there. I'm honestly crazy impressed with the way that went. Like, I honestly thought this part of the video would be me kind of telling you about how to get around this thing and how to do this and like, all the little tips and tricks you need to kind of get something to work. But it was flawless. It works really, really well. Everything's really well thought out. Uh, the instruction manual is really easy to use. It's got really clear photographs in it. It's all round a great kit. So I highly rate it. And this is before I rode it. Um, I have now taken it for my ride. And um, the next video will be me essentially taking it for a commute. That's what this whole build is about is commuting ultimate commuter but that's what the next video will be us riding the bike but i also want to go and take this to my dad and let him have a ride um i strongly stand by the fact that e-bikes and these types of kits in particular are to help people access cycling um my dad has cycled all his life but um he's getting on a little bit he's had a few injuries over time you don't walk that straight anymore and he struggles to ride a bike so let's put him on one of these and see how far he gets so if you want to see that, and I think you will want to see that, make sure you subscribe to the channel. Oh, and we have new stickers. Uh, 
over Christmas, I was giving away a sticker for free when you make any order of stickers. Uh, so you all love that so much, so I decided to do it again. Uh, so this is the new free sticker. It's the, logo, it's the logo sticker that I have at the beginning of every video and a lot of you have said that should be a sticker, so it's a sticker. But not only that, um, I'm going to give it to you. All you need to do is buy a sticker from my website. The link is, or the, the website's here and the link will be below. And um, yeah, that's that. So don't forget to subscribe and if you want to see another video and you can't wait until next week, that one is a particularly good one.